Hello dear test takers, welcome back to my Grammar for Success channel. I am Koresh Babu, a retired lecturer in English from Hyderabad. In today's video, I am going to explain the grammar questions given in the 2022 TET paper 2. All of you know pretty well that solving and practicing the previous year's question papers will surely help you get acquainted with the kinds of questions, posing of questions or framing of questions. They also help you gain more confidence over the subject and uh, therefore I request all of you to watch this uh, fully explained and information packed video till the end uh, without skipping it in the middle. Thank you. Now let's get into the video. Uh, the grammar questions in the question paper begin from 61st question onwards. Okay. Now here the very first question is a question. Uh, given on a passage. We have to read the passage and we have to answer these questions. For each blank, you know, four alternatives are given and you have to choose one of them as your answer. Right. And here, let us see the passage first of all. And afterwards, let us solve the questions. Right. Now, the passage is like this. This is a passage. What is that? At 7, 17 a.m. on June 30th, 1908. This incident happened in 1908, a century ago. Right. And what happened? An explosion erupted. Explosion means the act of exploding, the act of uh, bursting out uh, with uh, fiercely. So, that's called explosion. An explosion erupted. Erupted means again burst out. An explosion erupted where? In the forest of Siberia, Russia. So, this Siberia is Russia, this is that. The massive explosion, the massive is large scale explosion. Already you know the meaning of explosion, okay, uh, bursting out. So, massive means large scale or what is a heavy or huge, mammoth, whatever you can say. The massive explosion dash shock waves on barometers as far away as England. That is the point. Dash number of trees, 80 million to be precise, were flattened and lay in a radial pattern. So, what happened? A dash number of trees. So, a dash number of trees, and here he is giving 80 million to be precise. 80 million. 1 million is, is equal to oh, 10 lakhs. You know, 80 million means you may as in no more than you can say some crores. Okay. 80 million to be uh, precise were flattened. Flattened means they were totally destroyed. Okay. And lay in a radial pattern. So, in that vicinity, in the area where the explosion took place, all the trees fell down and like that some thousands, millions and millions of uh, trees were uh, flattened or destroyed. The trees that remained standing and some of the trees, you know, that survived, they were standing dash telegraph poles, okay. They were standing dash telegraph poles as they had been stripped of their limbs and bark. So, how are they standing? They are the remaining trees means without leaves, limbs means here leaves and branches and uh, without any bark. Even the bark is, you know, stripped off. Stripped off means removed and their leaves, uh, branches were removed and leaves were removed. Leaves, branches and bark, these three were. Okay. The explosion. So, he is describing that, that explosion. This explosion is dash as the tungsten event. So, it is tungsten event. It is called, you know, it is referred to tungsten event. And it is generally accepted that this was the result of a cosmic body. And people believe that this is the result of a cosmic body. It is not the result of any human bomb hydrogen bomb or atomic bomb it is the result of some cosmic body cosmic means you know pertaining to the sky pertaining to the space uh, planets uh, stars uh, and uh, celestial bodies okay celestial bodies means that you find in the sky okay such as meteorite so in the space you find material material meteorite means meteorite planetoids asteroids will be uh, moving around the earth you know sometimes a piece of um, asteroid or planetoid might fall down on the uh, uh, fall on the earth so this you know uh, such as meteorite meteorite means a big boulder big rock heavy rock you no know, that is the dash with the earth so here are given what is that? Five blanks in this passage. Now you have understood the meaning of this passage. Now let us, uh, I cannot come back to this passage. Therefore, keep this passage in your mind and let us read the questions uh, and choose the relevant answer. Okay. So here 
what is that you know four options are given 61st question for registered means what is that recorded okay registered means recorded and expressed means showed the feeling or showed the opinion okay that is presented means uh, showed something to somebody so i am presenting this video to you okay present you know very well listed means you know wrote the word uh, things you know in an order one after another so these are the four words given for this 61st blank and now let's see that you know what is there in the 61st block because i cannot go back to the uh, first slide you know i am just reading it from this iphone the massive explosion dash shock waves dash shock waves means do you say expressive shock waves presented shock waves listed shock waves registered shock waves what is that that moreover you know uh, to uh, to he has given some clues shock waves on barometer on barometer what do you do you just uh, record this one so the shock, the massive explosion registered shock waves on barometer so this registered is to be used in this uh, blank 61 and uh, not the second one or third one or the fourth one okay no, they are not to be there they are registered and you go to the uh, next one what is that you know next one is 60 second one is there let me read the question here a dash number of trees here he says a dash number of trees okay that is the blank a dash number of trees okay dramatic is given dramatic means what is that you know dramatic means sudden and extreme dramatic means dramatic dramatic character pertain to drama that is one meaning dramatic means sudden and extreme so there is a dramatic change there is a dramatic increase in the uh, in the prices of tomatoes in the market dramatic increase all of a sudden 20 rupees kg tomatoes have gone up to two up to what is that you know uh, 200 rupees or 250 rupees like that so it's a dramatic increase sometimes dramatic decrease also is there in sales okay dramatic improvement so dramatic means sudden and extreme that is the meaning okay powerful means influential i am giving the meaning of these words powerful means influential though narendra modi is a powerful or what is that a political leader okay that is the powerful has another meaning what is it physically strong the dhoni is a powerful cricketer okay you can say that and remarkable remarkable is unusual extraordinary amazing astonishing it is a fantastic means extremely good and pleasant all these words you know the meaning of that now let us see the meaning of this you now which word is suitable in this blank let us see a dash a uh, number of trees what do you say a dramatic number of trees do you say or powerful number of trees or remarkable number of trees of fantastic number of trees what do you say then you cannot say dramatic number okay you cannot say powerful also you cannot say fantastic you can say remarkable number of remarkable means unusual amazing number of trees. so amazing number of trees extraordinary number of trees so this remarkable it can it will fit in that blank and therefore all the three uh, answers are uh, words are wrong and only this one is the right one okay and now let's go to the next uh, question 63rd one is there what is the question here the trees that remained standing okay telegraph pole dash telegraph poles okay the trees that remained most of the trees were destroyed but some trees that remained there dash the telegraph poles dash telegraph poles you know but here resembled resembled means looked like okay this is the meaning of this surrounded means encircled or enclosed to be on all sides you know yes uh, the pole is surrounded the house the pole is surrounded the thief like that Pre represented representing means to act or do something for somebody i am uh, i am representing my college he is representing his office something like that is representing represent means to speak or to act for somebody officially that's called so represented featured means to be an important part of uh, uh, can say something to be an important part of something for example nowadays on youtube and uh, even in the newspapers and here and there manipur issue is being featured being featured means it is being shown as an important part important issue featuring after knowing the meaning of these four words what do you think will fit in this blank the the trees what is that that remained standing dash telegraph poles telegraph poles means they resembled look good like they look like telegraph poles just like the telegraph poles or electric poles the, all the trees that were remained there was stand so this second one is not correct third one is not correct fourth one is not correct. 
now let's go to the 64th one 64th one indicated referred to accounted for declared these are the four words given for this 64th blank what is the uh, sentence given in the 64th one this explosion is dash uh, as the tungsten event this explosion is dash as the tungsten event tungsten event dash tungsten event indicated refer to accounted for declared see indicated indicated means showed this is not suitable okay accounted for means a uh, gave explanation for something no it doesn't suit there okay declared means announced so these three words don't suit there only refer to refer to means what mentioned what is that mentioned mentioned so this explosion what happened is mentioned as the what is that as the tungsten event okay and uh, you go to the so second one is the right answer right and you go to the last one here 65th one is here what is the 60 65th one okay uh, this was the result of four, four four words are given here immersing imposing immersion impacting first of all you see the meaning of these four words and afterwards you can go for the uh, uh, choosing the answer okay immersing means uh, dipping in the water are submerging in the water immersion what do you do uh, during ganesh uh, navaratra what happens you, know? you immerse the ganesh idol in the water okay in tank band or somewhere else okay you immerse immerse means to dip or to submerge something in liquid or water that's called immersing okay imposing means to making people accept uh, uh, certain things you, know? you are you, to to force people accept something the government will force you to accept something that means the government is imposing rules on us imposing rules on us means it is you know forcing us to accept those rules immersion means the act of immersion the immersion of khartabad uh, vinayaka idol will take place tomorrow the immersion the act of immersing so immersion immersing immersion okay impacting means what is that you know crashing hitting violently Okay, striking violently. Okay, it is that crashing, hitting violently. So it is like impacting. So here four words are given. When the meaning of, of these four words you have now known. And now let me uh, just uh, uh, read the sentence for you. And this uh, this was the result of a cosmic body. This was the result of a cosmic body. What is that cosmic body? Such as meteorite. Meteorite means a big boulder, a big rock having you no know, tons of weight dash with the earth dash with the earth means that meteorite what happens no, it dash with the earth means it you know what happens it impacts with the earth impact strikes fiercely with the earth so here uh, this is the right answer and this is not the right one this is not the right one this is. so in this way you have read the uh, you have uh, read the passage and you have understood the passage and now you have answered the passage now let's go to the grammar questions 66th one is there read the conversation openers okay he has given some conversation openers okay labeled as one two three four on one side and given on the left left side and their responses a b c d on the right now we have to match both of them what are the openers and what are the responses let us see them here okay well enjoy your day these are the uh, you can say openers these are the responses so this is the opener the opening statement of the conversation opener means opening statement of the conversation right well enjoy your day well when enjoy your day then what do you say then to this uh, you can say statement what do you what will be your answer they have done an amazing job yes i do it is a pug you as well goodbye don't mention it what do you use in that well enjoy your day okay you enjoy your day then the other person then yours what are you saying you as well you also so also you that means you can also enjoy your day you too enjoy your day that's the meaning goodbye so to this statement you know this answer or this response is fitting suitable so here let us say what is that for one what is that c is the right one okay right thank you so much for helping us okay the beginning statement of the conversation thank you so much for helping us then what do you say then thank you so much what is it? don't mention it mention not it's my pleasure you can say so many things uh, uh, when somebody thanks you 
but don't say uh, of when some somebody of your equal you know uh, of your age say something thanks you know you must say welcome but when the elderly people you know thank you then you must say don't mention it sir no mention sir it's my pleasure sir that's all you have to say but you should not say welcome when somebody says thank you so much for helping us then you must say don't mention it so here what is that uh, two what is that uh, d is the two d is the right one okay and here uh, what a beautiful decoration third one what a beautiful decoration then what is that okay they have done an amazing job so this is uh, for third one and what is that you know a is the answer and do you have a pet dog do you have a pet dog? For this, the remaining one is, yes, I do. When the question is given like that, do you have? Yes, I do. Do you take a cup of tea? Yes, I do. Do you help me? Yes, I do. If you don't want to help, no, I don't. Then you say, I don't. So that's there, that's language. Do you have a pet dog? Then here's, yes, I do. It's a pug. Pug means, uh, it's a breed of small, sturdy, compact dog with a large wrinkled face, just like what is that, you know, hutch dog. That's called a puck. puck. So here, what is that fourth one is matched with uh, B. So here, let us see whether, let us see the uh, answers. Uh, options are given here. Okay. Now, what is that? 1C. 1C is there here. Here also 1C is there. 2D. That must be 2D. Okay. 2D, it is there. 3A is there. So, the very first one is the answer, not the second one, third one, fourth one. All right. So, you can easily understand. First of all, you, you try to do it on, on a piece of paper. Then you search for the answer. Okay. You can easily get the answer. Right now, third 67th one is there. The underlined part in one word is pronounced in the, some way, in the same way as the letter O in about. How is O being pronounced in about? You know that. Now, let us see. Uh, the words okay boy got now go so here uh, this o is being pronounced as ow in which word is it giving you like that you see the phonetic transcription boy is there boy this is the phonetic transcription of this word okay uh, if you know the phonetic transcription you can understand this one very well right and got is there got means got got that is a phonetic transcription and here now is there yeah this is now phonetic transcription go means what go this is oh this is oh go go you don't say go you don't say you say go oh oh this is now oh okay and what is the pronunciation of this now? about a uh, about this is the phonetic transcription of this word about about this is small a uh, short a uh, that's when uh, about so what is the pronunciation of this about a uh, o oh, oh. so where is that o oh, here only not in this not in this not in this. that's for if you know the phonetic uh, symbols phonetic transcription you can easily answer this question okay right wrong wrong only this one is the right one okay right now let's go to the next question 68th one is there we bought the ticket and reached the platform we were surprised to find that the train had already left so this is the question okay this is a statement some uh, sent two sentences are given and what question is going is he going to ask you now come on let us see that identify the verb in passive voice in the above passage so the, he has got them underlined you know but reach it is surprised to find these words and identify the verb in passive wise in the above passage okay so now to find out the you can say sentence in the passive wise uh, there are certain rules please try to understand this tip i'll give you please uh, let me give you some passive wise features what are they called passive wise features okay what are the passive wise features you know am is are okay what is that? Was, were, plus, pp, past participle verb. Am, plus pp, is, or, was, were, pp. So, this is one. Whenever you come across this pattern, the, you must immediately think this is in the passive voice. Okay. And the second one, okay. Am, is, or, was, were, plus being, Plus PP, 
this pattern is also in the passive voice. That means I am being plus PP, is being plus PP, was being plus PP, were being plus PP, like that. Okay. And now I'll write the third one here. What is that now? Have been, has been, had been. These are plus PP. This is also passive voice. Okay. And the last one here is what? What is that now? Shall be. These are all model auxiliaries. What is that? Will be, should be, would be, can be, could be, maybe, might be, must be. We said all of them. PP. Please keep these four uh, points in mind whenever you ask to uh, show the sentence or the part of the sentence in passive voice. You must immediately remember these four things. Please keep these things. Now let us see the answers. You can, you only can tell me that. Okay, what is that? Shocked or surprised or water? Which one is that? But it's plain. It's a plain verb. Reach plain verb. What surprised? You? No. Word play. Word plus pp. Helping verb is there plus surprise PP is there. So this part is in the passive voice. This is the passive voice. Find is also not there. This is this one, this one, this one. These three are plain verbs, and only this that means they are all in active voice, and only this one is in the passive voice. So then your answer must be picked as like this. This is the surprise is in the passive voice because it is used with a helping verb. 69th one is there. I sent him a message. This sent question is given. This is a question. Okay. Now, what is he asking you? Come on. The structure of the above sentence is, he is asking you about the structure. Okay. Structure. Structure means, so, subject, verb, uh, uh, what is that, him. And, so, this is always the subject. Any word before the verb is called the subject. So, this is verb and him means this is object. Okay. Object. This is okay, object. Okay, right. This is there. Let us see uh, the uh, verb patterns, structures he has given. Subject, verb, indirect object, direct object. Subject, verb, noun, or pronoun. Subject, verb, pronoun, present participle. So, let us see out of them. Now, I sent him a message. Here, what is that now? I sent what? When you question the verb with what? What is that? You find what is that you now? Uh, the direct object. I sent what? A message. So, this is a direct object. Okay. Whenever you question the verb with to, to whom? Okay. Whenever you question the verb with to, to whom? Okay. Verb what or whom you get the direct object. If you question the verb with what or whom you get direct object. If you question the verb with to, to whom or for whom you get an indirect object. Please keep this point in mind. So, here I sent what? A message, direct object. I sent a message to whom? Him, indirect object. Okay, it is there. So, here subject is there, verb is there, indirect object is direct object. So, this uh, uh, the, the structure of the above sentence is subject, verb, indirect object and direct object and all others are not the right one. Okay, you can understand that. Now, let us go to the uh, second one. Next one. 70th one. Well, I do not think I will be home before 6. This is the statement given here and now he is asking you to identify the part of speech. Okay. He is asking you to identify the part of speech. What is the underlined word is there? What is the part of speech of this? Okay. Let us see that conjunction, adjective, uh, interjection, preposition. So, conjunction. Conjunction means it is not a conjunction because uh, if it is a conjunction, it connects two sentences or two words together. So, it is not doing that. So, it is standing at the beginning of the sentence and therefore, it is no, it is not at all a conjunction. Adjective. Adjective also, it is also not an adjective. Adjective means there must be a noun after that. He is a well man. Well man means healthy man. Okay. Well, after well, there must have been some noun. If there is a noun, then you think, you know, you, it is a, it is an, it is an adjective. But you hear nothing there. It is standing only at the beginning of the sentence, right? And uh, what is that? Preposition? No. 
Preposition means it comes before a noun or a pronoun and joins it to the rest of the sentence. But it's not doing that job here. So if you know the concept of these, you know, kind of what's the parts of speech, you can easily understand uh, what it is, what that word is. So it is neither a conjunction nor an adjective nor an what is it? Not a preposition. But what is that? It is an interjection. Well, it is used to uh, indicate the resumption of the speech, of the dialogue. Okay, well, well, we are all going to picnic tomorrow. Well, so it is the big, you know, it is generally used at the beginning of the sentence in order to make some statement, in order to resume the uh, can say, remaining speech or something like that. So here, this well is an interjection. Now, let us go to the next question. Now, 71st question is there. She went into the meeting like a bull in a china shop. She went into the meeting like a bull in a china shop. This in a bull in a china shop is an idiom. And then let us see what is the question. Identify the meaning of the underlying part. This is the underlying part. Instead of saying, you know, an idiom is simply asking underlying parts. Okay. Right. Identify the meaning of the underlying part of the sentence. Now, what is the meaning given here? So, four options are given. You have to choose the most relevant one the relevant one uh, from out of these four options a person who is very ugly but loves the beautiful things okay you know you understand this bull bull male bull means a male cow is called bull so it's very strong and rough and tough you know it's very clumsy and all that so here what is that a bull in a china shop china shop is means you no know, shop means with all uh, articles to be for sale you know so it's a shop it's a beautiful shop so if a if a bull enters the shop what happens you know you imagine that and here what has done a person who is very ugly but loves the beautiful things no a person who becomes too excited where no excitement is narrated no it is not that person a bull a person who is rough and clumsy bull always stands for being you know uh, what is that it stands uh, uh, for being rough and clumsy bull okay red bull where skill and care are so in a china shop you are supposed to be very careful because all articles are arranged in a systematic way in a shop. You cannot move as you please because you know if you move as you please what happens all the things will fall down and the shopkeeper does not keep quiet and that is why a bull in a shop china shop means okay enter she entered into the meeting she sorry she went into the meeting like a bull in a china shop means she like a person who is rough and clumsy where skill and care like where skill and politeness and care are to be uh, are, are required where these things are required you know she went into the uh, what's the meeting hall uh, very clumsily very roughly like that okay this is the right answer and even this is also not so first second fourth are wrong and only this option is right and 70 sec uh, second one one among the following is not the prefix of the verb it's a very uh, simple question but uh, if you have some idea about the prefixes and suffixes, you can easily answer this. Okay, this is there. Is it? A, uh, can it be a prefix of the verb? Yes. Okay. This law, dislocate, remove from the removing from the location, dislodge. Okay, large, large. Okay, and here disrupt. Okay, okay, disrupt. Okay, distract. Many words are there. Over is there. Okay, with over also, over can also be used as a prefix to form the verbs. Overcome, overeat, okay, oversleep, over is also okay, okay. And here, what is it? Full is there. It is not to be, it is not, you can say, a prefix that can form a verb. It is only an adjective. It forms only an adjective. Careful, beautiful. Yes, what is that? Yes, helpful. These are all full words. This is an adjective. This is the suffix for an adjective, but not for a verb. So, here, re is also there. Regain, restart. Okay, re, what is that? Rewrite. All these things are there. Re. So, re is used, re over, and this are uh, used as prefixes for a verb, but not this full. Full, you know, is used to form an adjective, right? So, therefore, this is your answer. And you go to the next question. The 73rd, choose the statement with proper punctuation. Proper punctuation is there. What is the proper punctuation? Here, uh, you know, I met a beautiful European woman. 
I met a beautiful European woman. So here are given something like that. Just before that, you know, I, I would like to you know after you know reading these you know uh, descriptive words, I would like to talk to you about a simple point. Please uh, just uh, uh, listen to me. So here. Uh, and you only choose the right answer after knowing that. When the adjective, why are the adjectives used? Okay, adjectives are used to describe, please listen to this, describe a noun. Okay, you know this very well. Adjectives are used to describe a noun. So, if uh, adjectives, okay, adjectives, okay, adjectives used to describe a noun are of equally, are equally important, are equally important are equally important then what happens you know you can use what is that a comma if the if all the adjectives use it to describe the same noun you, then they are called coordinate adjectives they are called coordinate adjectives coordinate adjectives then you can use it. so just a little ago i i have uh, told you about uh, what is that you know yes a pug is what what is a pug pug is pug is a small okay we are describing the dog small what is it sturdy sturdy and compact dog compact so we are small is small sturdy compact these three words are describing this dog only these three adjectives are equally important equally important they have got all uh, uh, descriptive qualities are there small dog this sturdy dog compact dog okay so here all these adjectives are uh, 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 what is that equally important and that's why they are called coordinate adjectives okay this one point you keep in mind and the second point here is you know when some adjectives used to describe a noun is are not equally important are not equally important okay if at all they are, they are not equally important they are called cumulative adjectives then you need not use any comma here, if you watch this uh, uh, sentence, please, I am giving an uh, elaborate explanation about this. I met a beautiful European. So, beautiful is a word, you know, pertaining to the, uh, telling us about the quality of this woman. It is indicating the quality. But European is not indicating the quality. It is indicating the place. <laughs> Here, small, sturdy, compact. These are all indicating qualities equally important means this is this is the as this is the meaning uh, not equally important means this beautiful is indicating the quality this european is indicating the place these are not equally important when that is the case no comma should be used there so here i met a beautiful european so this is the right one here in the second sentence third sentence fourth sentence in these three options commas are used so that's why they are wrong if you can understand this one you understand this one okay please this is a very important aspect basing on this you may be given some more questions in your forthcoming examination that's why be careful be on the alert okay okay coordinate adjectives cumulative adjective coordinate adjectives will take comma and end if there are three small comma sturdy and you now here you have comma and if there are only two comma is used there for example this is not there then what's a pug is a small comma sturdy dog then you use this small if it is not there suppose if it is not there then you can say uh, pug is a small comma sturdy dog you can use this because they are equally important but if, if, though they are here they are not equally important that's why you don't use any comma so please try to understand this one and now let's go to the uh, next uh, question 74th one find the error in the sentence given below what is that okay supposing if uh, it rains what shall we do so this is a question and uh, uh, this is the uh, question and uh, in this you know uh, a part b part c part d part are given and which part has a grammatical error that's what he is asking you so here in the very first you uh, know in the b part there is no mistakes grammar grammatical error in the c part there is no grammatical error in the d part also there is no grammatical error only in the uh, a part there is a grammatical error because you know here supposing is used if is there supposing means what supposing right supposing is a participial phrase okay participial participial provided that okay supposing means if 
provided that also means if so there are so many ways of expressing uh, the meaning of if with, with an inversion of had with an inversion of should okay with an inversion of were inversion is suffered yeah. what is that should it rain so actually you know supposing it rains is there you can use either supposing or it if supposing it rains correct if it rains correct but here in this supposing is used if is there so let me give you the supposing it rains okay, let me say if you can write if, if it rains right this is right supposing it rains this is correct it should also inversion should it rain yes had it rained okay so with should you can express the meaning of if by supposing should do had these are all inversion should it rain should it had it rained so with any one of them you can express the meaning of this so here two things are used supposing is used if is it so two things are used that's why in the first part uh, there is a mistake okay let us see the answers it rains no mistake what shall be no this is wrong this is wrong this is, wrong. This is only your answer right and 75th one it is becoming dash to find a job okay it is becoming here is a blank given what to use it what uh, what to use in that blank okay choose the right option to complete the sentence what are the options given here more hard hardest hard and hard hard and harder harder and hard so let me tell you about this verb first of all there are, there are some uh, verbs called inquiative verbs please look at this one inquiative verbs you might have come across uh, uh, many kinds of verbs you know uh, what is that you know transitive verbs intransitive verbs uh, stative verbs uh, and uh, what is that many kinds of weak verbs strong verbs long so leave the all of them and inquiative verbs are there what are the inquiative verbs what do they do they what is that they indicate uh, the beginning uh, development and final stages of an action okay they are, they indicate that what are the chief of inquiative verbs means get okay grow okay become okay and a turn etc a few more are there like that get grow become turn etc so what happens you know they get you know they are used with ordinary adjectives they are also used with comparative adjectives you know whenever a comparative adjective used with them double two times we have to use that it is the uh, it, it is the you can say you say there okay for example okay let me say it is getting okay it is getting cold this is right only positive degree adjective is used it is getting cold that means it's getting cold means how oh, like that so you can also say it is getting colder and colder Two times you are using the if at all you want to use the comparative adjective you have to use it twice colder and colder it is getting colder and colder so he is he is becoming richer and richer two times she is growing what is that she is growing what is that poorer and poorer poorer and poorer so with, with these verbs you know if you want to use a positive degree adjectives well and good if at all you want to use a comparative adjective you have to use it two times like colder and colder richer and richer poorer and poorer so he will becoming it is becoming what harder and harder if you know that you can easily directly uh, take the uh, choose the right answer here wrong 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 only this one it is becoming harder and harder to find a job nowadays right okay 76th one the boy laughed at the beggar this question is given and what is the uh, test giver is asking you to do the passive form of it okay passive voice this is in the active voice okay you have to turn it into the passive voice whenever you turn it in the passive voice you must look at the tense of the sentence what is the verb not simply laughed whenever there is a preposition you must include that also into the verb laughed is not the verb laughed at is the verb laughed means ha 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 that's laughing 
Laughed at means mocking at somebody. Hey, 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 you are mocking it. So laughed has another one meaning. Laughed at has another meaning. That's why whenever a verb is given with a preposition, you must take these two things uh, for uh, the verb. You must take the two things for that. Okay. So here laughed is not the verb. Laughed at is the verb. Okay, this is the verb, right? And uh, now what is the tense of the sentence? Simple past. The boy laughed at simple. So whenever uh, you change the simple past into passive voice, you must use uh, was and were. Okay, was or were according to the subject as object of the sentence. According to the object of the sentence, you should use either was or were. Right? That if the object is singular, you use was. If the object is plural, were you have to use. Right? And here, what is that? The boy is the subject. Right? Passive voice. Okay. Passive voice means what do you say then? Right. Uh, let me write here. So here, what is that? The beggar is the so this object, the boy laughed it. To find out the object, what should you do? You must ask the question, what? You must pose this question. The boy laughed it. what? No answer. Whom? The boy laughed at whom? The beggar. So this is the object. You bring it to the front position. Okay. The beggar. It is the singular object. Okay. The object is in singular number. And therefore, you have to use was. And laughed at. The past possible of laughed at is laughed at again. ED verbs are the same both in the past tense and parts possible. Laughed, laughed, same. Okay. And here you use the word by the boy. This subject part should be used. The beggar was laughed at by the boy. This is how you change this uh, active voice into passive voice. If you know this, you need not, uh, you can say, search for the answers. Okay. Now let me give you the options. Okay. Okay. The beggar was being, okay, being is not used because this is simple past tense. When you turn the simple past into passive wise, you don't use being, only was or were you use. Was being means this is past continuous, okay. So this is wrong, this is wrong, therefore. Was laughed at is there, okay, right. The beggar was laughed at by that boy, this is right. Was by the boy, laughed at is laughed here, you see that. So that's why here it is used correctly, but here it's not. So that's why this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, only the third one is the right one. Now you can look at. The boy, beggar was, since it is past tense, laughed at, okay, by the boy. That's correct. Right. Now, one more sentence is also given on uh, voice, okay. It interests me. What is that? This sentence can be rewritten as, that means he is asking you to change it into passive voice. What is the tense of the sentence? Okay. It is the simple present, okay. So, here, me is there, okay. It interests, okay. It interests what? No answer. It interests whom? Me. Okay. Whenever you question the verb with what or who, you find the direct object. Only when you find the object, you can you can bring the subject to the object to the front position. Then you can change it. You know? Without knowing the object, you know, you cannot change the uh, sentence into passive voice. That's the reason why. So, you, you don't keep it. It interests what? No answer. It interests whom? Me. Me is the object. So, bring it to the front position. When me comes uh, uh, to the front position, it becomes I. When it goes after the verb, it becomes me. So, I takes the helping verb, ah, interested, yes, by, uh, in it, you have to say, you cannot say by it, okay, in it, okay, because, you know, it interests me. So, in it, you have to say. Now, let us, you know, uh, what is that, you know, see the options. I will be interested, simple feature is given, no. I was interested. No, I am interested in it. Right? I have been interested. No. So only this one is the right one, and all others are wrong one. Seventy-eighth one. I said to him, "Why are you working so hard?" So this is given in the direct speech, and uh, what is he asking you to do? It ca it can be reported as it reported means it can be changed into indirect speech. Okay, indirect speech as. That means he is asking you to change it into indirect speech, and you know very well, okay, why are you? So, when you are you change this, you know, what happens, you know, I said to becomes asked. Whenever there is a WH question or an ordinary question, yes, what should you do? This said to should be turned into asked, clear, and the object is used as it is. Okay, since it is a WH question, the same WH word must be used as it is. Okay, after this, you know, you now, you do one thing, you, re, you know, you, you turn it into the right sentence order. 
Why are you? Why is used as it is? Okay. Are you working so hard? Now change it into the right sentence order. You are working so hard. This is there. Now, now this question order has been changed into the right sentence order. Whenever you change the uh, ordinary question or WH question into the indirect speech, you know, you must change the question order into the right sentence order, right? Okay, here we have changed. Are you working so hard is a question. Then what is the right, uh, right sentence of that? You are working so hard. Now, you get the, you have got the right sentence. Now, you see, you is turned into him. When you, you is turned into him, it becomes he. Or, you know, it is present continuous. No, past continuous. Or becomes into was, okay? Working as it is, okay, so hard as it is. I asked him why he was working so hard. This is how you have to change. If you know this, answer is also easy for you. See, I asked him why was he working so hard. See, question order is given, that's why it's wrong. I asked him why he, had he been working. No, this is also given in the wrong answer, wrong uh, can say order. I asked him why he had been working. No, I asked him why he was working so hard. If you know the correct answer, whatever the uh, you can say confusing answers uh, he will give you, you can easily strike them off, and you can choose only the right answer. Right. And now 79th one, find the correctly spelled word. So correctly spelled word is there. Adulation, 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 adulation. So this is you know, adulation. He is asking, talking about uh, adulation. This is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. This one is only wrong. Adulation means what? Adulation means over praise. Over praise. Excessive flattery. Excessive flattery. Oh, you are like this, you are like this. Generally, you get, you know, the cinema actors will get adulation. Sir, your action is wonderful, sir. Oh, awesome, sir. This, sir, that, sir. You are, you know, you are overpraising him. That overpraise is called adulation. 80th question. The entire process of language learning in child takes place nearly in dash by which the child is identifies, identified as a linguistic adult. Okay. Now, by what age? A little child will become a linguistic adult. That is the question. By what age? From third year onwards, the child will be lisping. He will be talking something uh, ununderstandable. That is called lisping. No? Fourth year, he will be talking uh, somewhat better. Fifth year, he will be talking better. In the sixth year, what happens? No? He will talk you know, in a full-fledged manner. He will talk you know, in, a, uh, in a clear manner. Okay? So, let us see that the options are given. 3 years, 4 years, 6 years, 5 years. So, I, as far as my knowledge goes with this question, I think this uh, 6 years is the right answer. Because by the, uh, when the child attains the age of 6, you know, he can speak you know, a beautiful mother tongue okay? without mistakes. He can read also by the age of 6. You know, he can read and write what is that uh, his uh, mother tongue. Okay. Then he becomes a linguistic adult, right? Okay. Now we go to the next question. We use rising intonation in, okay, rising intonation. Rising intonation means pitch like this. This rising intonation, falling intonation. We have two kinds of intonations. Pitch, okay. This rising intonation. You know, at the end of the statement or at the end of that, you know, at the end of some statement, you know, you raise your voice. When you raise the voice, that is called the rising intonation. When you come down, that is called falling intonation. Rising and falling. These two things are there. When then, who, we use rising intonation in what? What is that? Ordinary statements? No. In the ordinary statements, for example, I am going to college. So, I am going to college. I am going to college. So, what are you doing? So, you are going like this and then coming down. Falling intonation is there on this, on the ordinary station. He is a doctor. You are falling down. She is a nurse. I am a retired lecturer. Something like that. I am going to college. So, after the ordinary statements, you know, the, these ordinary statements take the uh, falling intonation. Greetings also, falling intonation. Greetings. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Something. Many, many happy returns of the day. Okay, greetings. And you say, no, oh, what is that? You know, oh, happy new year. 
happy diwali so these are all the greetings you know uh, at the end of them you know you fall down that means happy birthday to you so last item on a list so commands commands means come here stand up come here put that on the table get me a glass of water these are all commands so they also taken a falling intonation and the last item on a list also takes the falling intonation not the rising intonation because let me give you but i don't understand as far as this uh, uh, question is concerned you know uh, i'm a bit a little bit doubtful about the answer you know because uh, you must excuse me for that because you know i cannot give you the correct answer for this because our uh, last item not on the last item uh, on the items mentioned in the list you know uh, you will have a rising intonation for example so you say i like some eggs okay some milk some what is the cheese and some bread how do you read this i like some eggs okay i like some eggs i like some eggs some milk some cheese you know in all these things you know it will go up so when you say this you know i like some eggs some milk some cheese and some bread and some bread and some bread at the end you know at the end of this you know you will fall down so the falling intonation it will receive the falling intonation and all other things you mentioned in the sentence you know in the you know list you know uh, will take you know rising intonation but this one takes the the last one takes the last item takes the falling intonation but here he says something uh, otherwise you know for example uh, what did you buy yesterday in the market i bought tomatoes potatoes chilies and cucumbers you are when you when you mention the last one you come down falling intonation is there so here uh, something he wanted to hear this is not correct this is not correct this is not he, he must be trying to say this one so please uh, leave it you know uh, i leave it to your uh, wisdom only please think of that right words that have the same pronunciation that it, but differ in spelling and meaning are so here he is talking about the kinds of words you know so before we answer this question let me talk to you about the words in the english language you see that confuse the students uh, very much so what are those words you know there are as many as five kinds of words of course broadly speaking there are two kinds of words structure words and content words that's okay but uh, uh, beyond that you know there from another angle you know there are five kinds of words what are they antonyms synonyms okay See, antonyms means you know very well opposite words. Everybody knows them. Okay, opposite words. Good, bad, up, down, beautiful, ugly. These are the opposite words. Synonyms means words. What is that? Having similar meaning. Similar meaning. Words having similar meaning. Similar meaning means not the same meaning but similar meaning. Almost the same meaning, but uh, almost the same meaning, but uh, not the same meaning. Please remember this. Here, what is the third one? Is that homonyms are there? Homonyms are there. Homonyms means what is that? Uh, words having what is that? Same pronunciation. They have same pronunciation. Okay, same pronunciation, but uh, different. Please keep this point. Different uh, spelling. And different meaning. So these are called what is that now? Homonyms. Home, for example, right is there. Sun is there. Sun means yes, y and sun is there. Yes, u and sun. Same. Sun, sun. Sun means my elder son is in the USA. Sun, you know, is the first son of the family. Okay. Sun. Sun means the sun rises in the east. Okay, right. What is that now? Yes, week is there. Week and week is there. Weak means W E A K. Weak means I am very weak. She is very weak because of COVID, right? And weak means there are seven days in a week. Okay, two and two. As it is too much. As two students have failed in physics. Okay, write that now. So in this way, same pronunciation. Sun, sun, weak, weak, two, two. Same pronunciation, but different spelling, different meaning. 
such words are called homonyms okay right and now we go to the next one let me give you them give them here fourth one is there homo homophones are there homophones means what uh, yes same pronunciation okay same spelling different meaning please keep this point same pronunciation same spelling different meaning for example here uh, what is it bear bear means to endure to endure i can't bear this uh, hot weather i can't bear this temperature i can't bear this cold weather bear means to endure so bear has another meaning same spelling same pronunciation bear bear means what a wild animal okay at the north pole you can find white bears okay in alaska you can find black bears white bears bear means an animal so similarly like that you know right right one more example i am giving for right means you are right same spelling same pronunciation right on your right, right means right side right means you are correct right means right side the house is on the right side right side so in this way same pronunciation same spelling but different meaning they are called homophones and one more thing fifth one is there they are all confusing to the students you know that's why i am giving homographs homographs means words having what is that you know as uh, uh, can say uh, different spelling sorry same spelling same spelling but uh, different pronunciation and uh, meaning different uh, meaning so same spelling it they will have same spelling but different pronunciation different for example what is that you know yes uh, uh, let me say what is that example what example should i give you? Um, what is that tear is there this tear is there. this tear means what is that phonetic transcription ear ear uh -huh. tear okay tear ear tear tear means a drop of water that comes from the eyes is called tear and here you know t r tear tear means this is tear this is tear tear means rip the tiger will tear you into pieces rip you into pieces okay tear so similarly okay wind is there wind means movement of air movement of air Okay, this and here same spelling, but wind you have to say. This is wind. This is wind. Wind. Wind means to twist. To twist means he is winding the key. What are you doing? I am winding my watch. Winding my watch. Winding the key. Winding works. Sri Rama winding works. Winding. Wind, wind, same spelling, same, what is that, you know, same spelling, but a different pronunciation, different meaning. So, these are, these are called homographs and homonyms, homograph, homophones, homograph. These three are very, very confusing to the students. Please keep them in your mind for your future uh, needs. Okay. Right. And now, let us go to the, what is that question? What is the question here? words that have the same pronunciation okay but different different in different spelling and meaning that means same pronoun different spelling so homonyms that must be the answer right and now let's go to the answers so options homonyms antonyms homophones synonyms wrong 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 right 83rd one is here the phrasal verb blow up means it is a phrasal verb blow means what blow is a normal verb the wind is blowing okay the wind is blowing fiercely, right? As the policeman is blowing a whistle. The policeman is blowing a whistle. Blow means it has got two meanings. Blowing the wind, blowing whistle. So blow up means it's a pressure verb. Blow up. What is that? Blow up means 
explode or extract or what is that exam which is the right one so extra no explode means to bust out to bust out explode means to bust out extract means to take something out of that you extract oil from what is that peanuts examine means to what is that uh, test examine okay explore means to investigate so what is the meaning of this blow up blow up means you know what is that explore this is not correct this is not correct this is not correct and that's the right one now we go to the next question 84th one the figure of speech in which words are used uh, in such a way that their intended meaning is different from actual meaning intended meaning is different from actual meaning and here uh, what is that you know uh, what are the what is that options given here light out light irony metonym and simile so these four figures of speech are given light like notice means what uh, uh, what is that using a, a double what is that you know uh, negatives using a double negatives to bring what is that positive meaning okay to, for example you say not bad how is the biryani not bad so bad not is a negative word bad is a negative light like notice how do you feel in this uh, working women's hostel? Not unhappy. Not unhappy means not is a negative word. Unhappy is a negative word. But you say not unhappy is happy. Not bad means good. So not bad means good. Not ha unhappy means happy. Irony means what? You use what is that now? It is a form of humor uh, uh, which involves uh, uh, in saying the things uh, which the writer doesn't mean. So this is the irony and irony for example you know outside it is raining it is very cold it is very you know you know what is that uh, uh, unpleasant then what are you saying what is this man saying oh how beautiful the weather is weather today how wonderful the day today so here is outside weather is different uh, but here is uh, how wonderful the day today so you say something but you know the meaning of that is not intended you want to say something against that you no know, opposite to that okay here that is called irony and metony means using what is that referring to something by another word for example uh, you say uh, instead of uh, referring to the us president you say the white house the white house means the president so instead of new york short, uh, stock exchange you say the wall street instead of the film industry you know say hollywood so in this way you use some other word to indicate uh, something okay this is called using referring to something by another word is called meton simile means uh, it's a comparison he is like a snake you are comparing you use what is a like and as mentioning the simile okay and here in this way simile he is like a snake her eyes are like diamonds so something like that you know so here so these are the four things light out is irony metony simile so what the what is the meaning here the speaker of speech in which words are used in such a way that their intended meaning is different from actual meaning that is irony so when the weather is weather outside is very bad and what are you saying oh how wonderful the day today is how pleasant the weather is outside is drizzling it's showering it's raining all the time and it is very cloudy you know okay unpleasant outside but you are saying how nice the weather is so in the, that means you know you want to say something but you are saying something that is the intended meaning is different your intended meaning is the weather outside is bad but you are saying something okay right okay now let's go to the next one so listening in the classroom seminar or a lecture hall comes under what what is that you know casual listening no casual listening means listening to something without any purpose is called casual appreciative listening means listening to something you know uh, in order to appreciate that one okay focused listening that means in order to uh, understand that in order to what is that interpret that in order to respond to that so this so when you sit in the classroom or when you listen to the seminar or lecture you how do you do you listen to that you know you this is the important you listen to it attentively that's why it is called focused listening not just listening so here casual listening appreciative listening just listening these are not the things focused listening is the right one now 86 to 90 read the following passage so here another passage is given 
Okay, you have to read this passage and answer the questions given below. How many questions are given? Five questions are given, 86 to 90. First, let us read the passage very quickly and then uh, answer the questions. The speaking tree great men like Swami Vivekananda, Tagore, Mahatma Gandhi, Sarvepal Radhakrishna affected the integration of mind, body and soul through their wise words. Through their wise words, they integrated. Integrate means some combination of what is a mind, body, soul and affected. They had thrown some powerful, you can say, impression on the minds and mind, body and soul of the people through their wise words, which it delivered. And these wise words are delivered in the form of messages of peace and love. Okay. India in her struggle for freedom was fortunate uh, to have uh, been under the auspices of such uh, illuminates. So during the Indian freedom struggle, what is that? You know, these illuminates, these you know, wisest persons are the greatest persons like uh, Swami Vivekananda, Tagore, Mahatma Gandhi, Radha Krishna. See, they you can say inspired the people during the freedom struggle. Right? Mahatma Gandhi affectionately called Radha Krishna Lord Krishna. Mahatma Gandhi called Radha Krishna. What is that Lord Radha uh, Lord Krishna? And he said he himself was Arjuna. And uh, he called Radha Krishna, Lord Krishna, and he himself Arjun, his people. Indeed, Radha Krishna's achievements and teachings validate the traditional belief in the wisdom and indispensability of the Guru. So, Radha Krishna's achievements and teachings, you know, he validated, he supported the traditional Indian belief. What is the traditional Indian belief, you know, is that belief in the wisdom. So, it believes in wisdom. Our Indian tradition believes in wisdom and in the indispensability of the Guru. So, in the uh, what is that existence of Guru? Without a Guru, you cannot get good education. There are so many guides, there are so many books available in the market, there are so many bookstalls. And uh, you don't go to the bookshop and buy some books and uh, read for yourself and get knowledge. Because you know, only when teacher teaches you, you get that knowledge. That's why. Yes, Acharya Devo Bhava. So, armed with a vast knowledge of Indian philosophy, he spoke of the spiritual advanced character of Indian wisdom. Right. His arguments inspired freedom fighters. So, he inspired the freedom fighters. Scholars are like turning them into ardent admirers of India. He inspired the freedom fighters and uh, you can say uh, scholars uh, and made them admirers of uh, India and Indian culture, its people and culture. It was his positive spirit that made the best universities in the world invite him to grace them with his lecture. So, therefore, because of his wonderful knowledge of Indian, uh, what is that, uh, Indian uh, culture and all that, you know, he was invited by so many universities abroad and uh, he was asked to deliver, you can say, lectures uh, uh, in the, what is that, you know, in their universities. Radha Krishna also seemed Indian, the highest offices as the ambassador to Russia and vice president and president. You know, he uh, rendered his services as the ambassador to Russia and vice president and later president to this great Indian country. Okay. And his autobiography, he remembers his wife as an everyday, everyday heroine. Okay, everyday heroine. He called his wife as an everyday heroine who epitomized selflessness. She has become a symbol of selflessness. Okay, and stood for the victory of mind over matter. He honored this character of Indian women and dedicated a book titled Religion and Society. So here, Religion and Society, it is the autobiography of uh, this uh, Sarvepali Radha Krishna. And in this Religion and Society, he what is that praised uh, women uh, very much. And he said, you know, these Indian women are the best women. They work selflessly for the country. They work selflessly for everything. That's why. So about the Indian women, he wrote. And a dutiful teacher. He was a teacher filled with uh, a sense of duty. A deeply spiritual thinker, able pol policy maker. Radha Krishna was uh, every bit the visionary India, uh, India, India needed. He was a great dreamer of uh, wonderful India. He was a dreamer. Visionary means a dreamer. Dreamer of wonderful India, progressive India, okay, developed India like that. Nobel laureate C. V. Raman beautifully summed up his glorious life. And this Nobel laureate C. V. Raman, you know, told uh, about this uh, C. V. Raman and praised him. Thus, how the frail body of Radha Krishna enshrined a great spirit, a spirit, a great spirit which we have learned to revere and admire, even to worship. So this uh, C. V. Raman says, this uh, Radha Krishna has a great spirit. You know, everybody has to revere him, respect him, and admire him and worship him. So in this way, this is all about Sarvepalli Radha Krishna. Now let us see the questions. How do great men affect the integration of mind, body and soul? According to the passage, what is that you know? Mind, body, soul through their wise words. Let us see the options. Through their message of peace and love? No. Through their integration of body and mind? No. Through, their, through freedom? No. Through their wise words. 
and these wise words were delivered in the form of messages of peace and love that is that. but that is okay very important through their wise words so this is the answer to that question and uh, they affected uh, the integration of mind body and soul through their wise words that's it mahatma gandhi called himself dash of radha krishna dash of radha krishna what did he say arjun of radha krishna okay not guru or friend and 88th one radha krishna remembers his wife as dash in his autobiography how does he remember uh, his wife and everyday heroine it is given in the passage so everyday indian woman no 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 only everyday uh, an everyday heroine in his uh, autobiography okay 89th one name of the book written by radha krishnan that was dedicated to the selflessness of indian woman what is that you now autobiography religion and society all of you know very well as this religion and society is the autobiography of sarvepalli radha krishnan now 90th one according to gandhi ji what made his it should be him what made him and the people admire radha krishnan what made him and the other people admire radha krishna means here four options are given a great spirit is the right one his vision his policies his frail body these are not the you can say things that made the people uh, admire him but only his great spirit only made the people what is that admire him okay this is about uh, uh, this question paper uh, tet paper 2 2022 dear test takers thank you so much for watching this video If you like it, please consider subscribing to my channel. If at all it is possible for you, please share it with your friends, near and dear ones. Okay, and uh, some more videos are also going to be uploaded very shortly. And watch this video and get benefit out of this largely. And uh, with another beautiful video, I'll be back to you. Until then, bye to you all. Right.